Rub up your engines! Well, here's a strange one. You can now lease a Toyota electric car pretty cheap. One deal is $129 a month for 36 months and just $1,999 to do with signing. Hey, <laughs> I guess they want to try to get him out. Now, that's a deal in San Francisco. I got special things going on there, but the Toyota electric vehicle has not been all that popular, right? It's a $44,500 electric car. How can they lease them so cheap? Well, I guess they just want to get them out there. You can find a 2023 BZ4 XLE as low as $124 a month lease. And that comes to $6,643 for three years. Now, that's a deal. <laughs> the average new car, you're spending more than six grand a year with it well this one's only going to cost you six thousand six hundred forty three dollars for three years not a bad deal you know shows you that the lease deals on evs are really aggressive because they want to get them out there they got them lying around nobody wants them so they're lowering it like that's just absolutely insanely cheap price in san francisco a rav4 le lease it's $369 a month with $3,000 down. So leasing that RAV4 is going to cost you $16,200 for three years instead of $6,000 for the electric Toyota. Big difference there, right? That's a lot of difference. Of course, realize the RAV4 is a regular car. The other Toyota is a fully electric car. It just shows that people are not that interested in the fully electric cars. Sad but true, even Toyota's joining everybody else to make things cheaper in Mexico. The most popular mid-sized pickup truck in America, the Toyota Tacoma, now has 100% of its production in Mexico. Come on, Toyota, you know, why are you doing this? Now, I do have to say, in Toyota's defense, not that I'm going to care that much about defending the corporation, but they have been making Tacomas for a long time, decades in Mexico, right? And I've had people bring me, even when I was back in Houston, Tacomas that were made in Mexico, that were 10 years old, had 200,000 miles, and they still work perfectly fine. So Toyota seems to do a better job of getting the Mexicans to do a good job than, say, Ram and Chevy and Ford do with all the problems they have with their Mexican-made stuff. But still, Toyota, you know, come on. Just to save that bit of money, hey, they were making them in San Antonio for a long time. Now they only make the Tundras in San Antonio. They don't make any of the Tacomas anymore. And I mean, hey, you know, come on, Toyota. You started making your nice trucks in the United States there, the bigger one, in Indiana. Then you moved it to San Antonio. Well, now they're moving a bunch of it to Mexico. I say, bad move, Toyota. I don't advise doing that to all your production down there. Who knows what's going to happen in Mexico other than you got cheap labor down there. Get this, 2024 EV sales for Volkswagen in Europe are down 25%. They kept saying they're going to buy more as time goes on. Ah, maybe not even in Europe. There's a noticeable increase in the gasoline power sales. Electric vehicle sales of Volkswagen down 25% in Europe. Now, gasoline sales went up 4%, and that's almost 2 million vehicles. So, they're saying, oh, they're going to buy electric. They're buying... Two million almost gasoline and diesel powered vehicles there. There's so much of this fantasy world. Even the Europeans are ditching the idea. But strange enough, Volkswagen said they had a 91% increase in EV sales in China, where they're competing with the cheaper Chinese models, right? Of course, all this stuff. You must take it with a grain of salt because they say it's a 91% of sales in China. Who knows? Maybe they sold, you know, 2,000 and this year they sold almost 4,000. You know, figures can be deceiving people just when people start throwing percentages at you tell them you want the raw dad i mean one time they said ev sales in mexico are up 200 percent and he went from selling eight cars to selling you know 24 cars so always keep that in mind you need the actual raw figures to see what's going on well kia's at it with a crappy quality right kia's now recalling 427,000 Telluride SUVs because the cars might roll away while they're parked. Or oh, wouldn't that be nice? The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says the intermediate shaft and right front drive shaft of 20 to 20 
four Tellurides may not be fully engaged, and then they'll be rolling away. They think that it's improper assembly of the shaft not being engaged correctly. And of course, as usual, they're trying to fix it with a software update of electronic parking brakes, and they say if any of the shafts are damaged, they'll be replaced. Okay. Now they make it a lighter problem than it actually is. They say, well, it may roll when you're going down a hill. Okay, because the shaft comes off transmission where it fits in, so then the car starts rolling backwards, right, or forwards, whatever way you're pointed. But that also means while well, you're driving down a highway, if the shafts come loose, you won't have drive power anymore, and your car will stop going, and people might smash into you and have a crash. They always try to make it the minimum thing possible, right? If your drive shafts come off of your transmission, that's a really bad thing. It's dangerous. Plus, if they come off the transmission while you're driving really fast, they come out, they could hit something, jam in, lock the wheel up. All kinds of bad things can happen. And as I said, they can talk all they want about Kia. Oh, Scotty, you don't know. They make good cars now. No, they don't. They don't make good cars. They never have made really good cars. And you can see from this, their quality control is absolute garbage. Value your money. Don't buy a Kia. Now, if you think owners at Tesla are kind of snobs, guess what? A Tesla driver called the police on a Rivian because the guy was charging his Rivian in a Tesla supercharger. Now, Tesla said that they're allowed to use it, right? So this guy parked it there, and a the guy calls the police on him. You're on a Tesla charging. Since mid-March, Tesla has slowly been allowing more electric vehicles to charge at their stations. A Rivian owner in California, you know it's going to be California, right? Was on a road trip. He was charging at a Tesla station, and the guy pulls up in a Model Y and went Karen mode and said, Look at that sign, Tesla vehicle charging only. He said it was illegal, and he called the police. The owner of the Rivian, who was trying to charge the thing up, said, I was taken aback by his extreme reaction. I finished disconnecting my adapter, got back, and left. I drove away. I saw him talking on a phone to the police. So much for the stereotype of EV owners being laid back and friendly. <laughs> It's just too much, you know? I mean, they're buying these expensive electric cars. They're snobs. They think they're saving the planet, which they aren't. And then another person who was supposedly trying to save the planet with his electric vehicle, he says, get out of here. This is only for us Tesla. You know, they can be in their Tesla club, the club of fools. It's like people wearing a Rolex watch trying to show, oh, look, I got a Rolex. I'm rich. I'm blah, blah, blah. What can you do these days, you know? They're out there. My advice is kind of try to avoid those people whenever possible. Well, you know, Tesla fired a bunch of people. Well, some of the people they fired, the executives are firing back and they're calling Elon Musk a pigeon CEO. Why are they calling him a pigeon CEO? Well, as a Tesla manager who was let go said, he's a pigeon CEO. He comes in, blops all over us, and then goes. <laughs> well, we've all seen pigeon poop on statues and all over the place, right? So then I'll call him and make pigeon CEO. Kind of fits, you know? I mean, when he originally took over Tesla, you know, Tesla, he didn't start the company. Another guy did. He wanted to make luxury electric cars for a few people. He buys the company. He's trying to sell them to everybody, right? He thinks everybody's got more money than they know what to do with, like him. I, but he used to go around every day. He had to fire somebody. He'd go in the factory, oh, you're fired, or an executive, you're fired. He's got this weird mentality, right? So calling him a pigeon CEO, it's a pretty good analogy. You know, he comes in, craps all on you, then flies away. <laughs> <laughs> to wherever he's going in fantasy land. He's firing all these people. They just laid off a ton of people, 14% of the workforce in Buffalo, New York, where they're doing stuff. So <laughs> he is crapping all over the place now, it seems. <laughs> More than usual for him. Well, we all know Tesla's got problems. Well, they got the Cybertruck out. Guess what? Here's how crappy they are. Now the Tesla Cybertruck deliveries are being held back because the pedals are falling apart. They couldn't even glue the stuff on the pedal. That the pedal covers are falling off. And these are brand new vehicles, right? They just came out with them. <laughs> I've seen even Toyotas that were 25 years old, and then finally the rubber came off of the pedal, and you either get a new one or glue the old one back on, right? But they were 25-year-old cars. <laughs> they weren't brand new ones. And of course, when the pedal comes off, they can slide off and get wedged under the plastic bulkhead, and you can get unintended acceleration. Now, a bunch of Cybertruck deliveries are being delayed because of this. They got to fix this before they get them out to people, right? They just don't have very good quality control at Tesla. If the pedal can't even be glued on right, you got a vehicle that has up to 845 horsepower, it weighs 6,600 pounds, right? More than three tons flying down the road. There's a recipe for disaster. 
I mean, the whole thing is a recipe for disaster, as far as I'm concerned. You know, like I tell people, please don't buy the first edition of anything that's out there, even a Toyota. You don't know what problems are going to crop up. And with Tesla, he rushes things in production because he's trying to sell as many cars as he can to keep the stock up so he can cash in on his billions. And of course, now he's mad because the court in Delaware said he can't get his $56 billion paycheck. Oh, ooh, wah, 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 right? So they're not even gluing the pedals on the accelerator, right? I mean, ah, you got to be a fool to pay a hundred grand for one of these things. You got to be a complete and utter fool. That's all I got to say. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.